You're listening to Soap Dirt, the latest in television entertainment news. Hey there, B&B fans. It's Belinda from Soap Dirt, and I want to talk to you about everyone who left Bold and the Beautiful in 2023. There's a surprising number of people who left under a variety of circumstances, some good, some of their own choice, some not so good, some that the CBS soap tried to slip by us and others that they just fibbed to us about. There is so much to unpack. And this is not a comings and goings update. It's just a goings update. I am ready to unpack this all for you. I've got so much info. If you haven't, please reach down, click subscribe so you don't miss any of our bold and beautiful updates. Now let's talk about it. So One of the bigger names that was released this year was Darren Brooks. He was let go as Wyatt Spencer. His last air date was September 8th. Sometimes when I talk about the way that CBS exits people and if people are leaving, I've seen some comments here with people saying, oh, they're not leaving because CBS would announce it. Just to clarify, no, they wouldn't. CBS very rarely announces things, even when they have blatantly fired someone, they will not own up to it. They say that their policy is not to comment But sometimes when they comment, like in the case of the next person I'm about to talk about, they aren't honest with us. So, you know, Wyatt hasn't had a front burner storyline in quite a while. Everybody was wondering where he is. I don't think anybody's missing his horrible fiance, Felony Flo Fulton, who hasn't been around since 2021 or 2022. She's off doing movies and stuff. But in terms of Darren Brooks firing, CBS never announced it. They never acknowledged it. Darren Brooks decided finally to reveal it himself that they had just quietly written Wyatt Spencer out. So also another person that basically had to reveal that they were fired because CBS wasn't being transparent at all. That was Krista Allen as Dr. Taylor Hayes. We had reported here a couple of months before she confirmed that she was let go, that we thought B&B had quietly fired her or was not going to renew her contract when it came up in October. And then CBS actually came out mid-September and responded to the growing chatter and said, no, no, Krista's still on contract. And then two weeks after that, told her she was fired and that they didn't want her for the last year of her three-year contract. Krista said she was blindsided and especially because they just had had her participate in the annual cast photo before they did it. I find this whole thing super sketchy. They said Taylor wasn't needed for storylines, but with Thomas about to be again accused of murdering intern Emma, stuff going on with Steffi and her marriage, all this, it sure seems like having their mom around would be nice, but they're not going to let us have it. Somebody mentioned here in the comments, oh, they're about to recast Taylor. No? Mm Mm-mm. Nope. They just said they don't need Taylor at all for the storyline. I don't see a recast coming anytime soon. So Krista's last episode as Taylor Hayes was November 10th, which means she finished up October 10th right as she shot that, I believe is when they said, oh, by the way, you fired. So not too cool. Other ins and outs this year, Lauren Fenmore, played by Tracy E. Bregman, who is usually over on Young and the Restless, was in and out at Bold strictly for the Fashion Challenge episodes, and she brought along with her former maid, Esther Valentine, played by Kate Linder. That was a lot of fun. That was also the last time we saw Dick Christie as Charlie Weber. We rarely see him anymore. It's not like he really has front burner storylines these days, but that was the last time we saw him too. When he was busy flirting with Esther. And you may wonder, how can he do that when he's with Pam? Well, we haven't seen Pam Douglas since December of 2022, a little more than a year, because Allie Mills has been over on General Hospital playing serial killer Heather Weber, a role for which she just won the Best Guest Star Emmy, and boy, was it well-deserved. She does great playing this serial-killing psycho. 
Ashley Jones is back as Bridget Forster, but now that Eric's medical crisis is over, I suspect that Bridget may not be around too much longer. We'll see. But in fact, the way that Bold handles things, you never know. We might have already seen her last episode and they may have just quietly exited her. The same thing for Windsor Harmon as Thorne Forster. We have not seen head or tail of him since December 15th. He had seven episodes. Windsor said he would really like to be back to Bold and the Beautiful for good, and he wished that Brad Bell would start writing for him again. However, Brad Bell seems solidly focused on bringing RJ and Luna and Zende to the front burner and pushing legacy characters to the back burner and some of them completely off the show. So, I'll be shocked if we see more of Windsor Harmon. I don't want him gone. I really like him as Thorn, but again, like with Bridget, they may have quietly exited him because he should have been around for more of those Eric episodes and he's not. So we'll just have to wait and see on that, but I suspect he might be gone. Susan Flannery was in and out for one episode playing Stephanie Forster as part of Eric's near-death storyline. And speaking of his almost dying, Justin Davis, who played Dr. Colby, his physician, who handed the case over to Fenn, is now also gone. We've also had some, you know, day players, people that we're used to seeing that came and went this year. I'm going to mention a few of those just briefly. Dan Martin, who plays Lieutenant Baker, and I think now he's like Chief Detective Baker, something like that. He was in and out in April when they arrested Sheila Carter, and she had that heart attack. Ken Haynes was spotted a few times as Sheila's smitten jailhouse pal and former prison guard Mike Guthrie. He was last seen in July 2023, and he's always a lot of fun. Ted King dropped in as Finn's dad, Jack Finnegan, but has not been seen since late July of this year because they decided they don't need him. I hope he shows back over up on General Hospital as well. Michael Corbett showed up the past year as sketchy Judge Scott, Deacon Sharp's friend who set Sheila Carter free, and Michael Corbett is always a joy to see anywhere. Patrick Duffy had more appearances as Stephen Logan a few times this year. Of course, he's the father of the Logan sisters, Brooke and Donna and Katie. He was last seen April 2023. And his lady love, Lucy, is played by Patrick Duffy's real life gal pal, Linda Pearl. She showed up as well. We also had Big Brother alums, Taylor Hell, Sari Fields, and Matt Klotz appear as a model named Mackenzie. Dr. Martin, who helped Eric and intern James, respectively. We also had some really big special guest stars in 2023 that came and went, like Andrea Bocelli and his wife, Virginia Bocelli. They were part of the Italy storyline. Marie Osmond showed up to play the snotty, snotty Countess von Frankfurt for the Fashion Challenge. Brad Bell's son, Oliver Bell, showed up to play Gingy, which is a horrible name to saddle a redhead character with, in my opinion. Danielle Uditi, who is known as the Pizzaiole, as in the top pizza chef, came to help Deacon when he was getting his restaurant set up when he was converting Il Giardino into a top pizza destination. We also saw with Deacon at his restaurant, J.J. Walker from Good Times. He played Count Boosie. And his grandson, Orville, was played by TikTok corn kid Tariq Logan. Bartender Hollis was on frequently in 2023, especially when he was trying to get with Brooke, but he's not been seen in a minute. Also, at Il Giardino in 2023 was James Corden, who played a busboy in a scene with probably my favorite cameo of the year, and that was Lil Nas X, who was on the same episode and was playing, I think, a... A waiter, a wine sommelier, something like that. But I like Lil Nas X a lot. All right. That's everybody that left Bald and the Beautiful in 2023. I hope you enjoyed the update. Please drop your comments below on who you are especially sad to see gone. And definitely come back soon. Please click subscribe if you haven't already. And I'm here talking bald seven days a week. As always, this has been Belinda from Soap Dirt. Thank you for being a loyal listener. Follow us wherever you get your podcast because you don't want to miss the next episode. 
Soap Dirt is on all the major podcast platforms, including Apple Podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and more. 